Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's Court of Spades T&D session. I am your DM and mythical <laughs> mythical tiefling, mythical beast tiefling, uh, Nyx. Uh, I apologize for the weird stream time and the incredibly short session we'll be having tonight. I was at the Renaissance Fair all day uh, and only got back until now. So instead of keeping everyone up till midnight, we're just going to try and jump right in. Um, I forgot to do introductions, I think, last week, so we'll run through those just really quick. Like I said, I'm Emily, and I'll be playing Nyx, the party's tiefling mythical beast, and we'll just go down the line. Okay. Hi, I'm Matt. I play uh, the human druid Jezebel Amaret. Hi, I'm... Hi, I'm Marin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wiz. I play Marin. Marlios, the uh, what elf wizard? No, half what elf wizard? God. <laughs> and it's Detroit here playing your boy Peter Longbottom, the halfling bard. <laughs> All right, and as a brief recap of what happened in the last session, um, did we start? We started with you guys in the tent, huh? Mm hmm. Ye yeah. That's what I believe. Okay, so you guys entered the tent, fell down some stairs, uh, and then fought some illusions uh, conjured by Dougal and Doyle. However, when Dougal was summoning his last illusion, which looked like it was about to be a hill giant, um, you, I think it was Peter, I believe, you mentioned the name of the proprietors. Well, you mentioned that you were being summoned by the proprietors. And um, Dougal scurried off in fear, taking his illusion with him. Um, and where we will pick off is the three hags that you are now face-to-face -face with. Well, not quite face-to-face -face because they're on a lower platform and you're standing in the um, stands still. So they are currently on a platform in the center of the the arena about 10 feet down from you and i'd say probably like mm, 40 to 50 feet ahead of you uh and i will pick up from there you hear the hag speak to you just as you watch in the dim light that is radiating from the lightning that has been kind of siphoned into this cauldron looking void that they're standing around and you watch as the largest of the three hags the one standing in the center addresses you and raises a long gnarled wooden staff and brings it to the ground with a large crack. This sound is the last sound you hear before all the lights are extinguished. And your ears are kind of ringing, but you begin to feel an unnatural sensation as almost it feels like wind begins to pick up and blow towards your face. And as you're experiencing this, you feel the ground beneath your feet begin to crumble slowly away. And you suddenly, for it feels like half a second, there is a bright blue flash. And um, everyone make a dexterity check. Welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons, guys. <laughs> Time to die. You assume. Oh, what, you assume I know what my dexterity modifier is. Where? Hold on. You said, you said saving throw, right? Oh, Marin. Marin is okay at dex. <laughs> uh. Mm, well. Hold on, I need to grab my dice, but uh, that's a fourteen. Emily. <laughs> Emily. Yeah. Is it a saving Minute? throw or just a? Just roll. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a saving throw. Thank you. 
Well, that's not great. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Can, can I do math? That's a ten. <laughs> Alright. Um, Fine. Oh, jeez. Good start, guys. So, as you guys witness this brief flash, you, um, Peter and Jez, you feel almost a suffocating sensation as your entire body kind of contorts with pain from a an electrical shock that doesn't seem to be like it's not like how Marin was directly hit by a bolt this sensation feels like it is being caused by the air around you like the very air itself is almost crawling across your skin like tiny electric bolts and uh You take seven points of thun uh, lightning damage. I was gonna say, please don't kill the only healer in this party now. <laughs> please. Um, don't worry, it was gonna be, like, deadly. Um, Jez and Peter, after you experience that pain, you kind of fall into this state of unconsciousness. You, you're not quite sure um, if you are conscious anymore, nothing around, you can't feel anything around you anymore. You just, the only sensation you can feel is that tension in the air and this weird breeze on your face that is coming up from below you. And you kind of float in this, I don't know what you would call it, I guess, purgatory between knowing whether or not you are dead or alive. Marin, mm. you feel that that sensation when the blue light flashes, but unlike Jez and Peter, it doesn't seem to harm you. In fact, when you feel the sensation crawl across your skin, you almost feel as if something inside you is stirring. And it almost seems to kind of rejuvenate you for a moment. And you're actually going to take, um, you're going to gain six health points back. Oh, sick. Um, and you are very aware of what's happening. You haven't been sent into this kind of drunken, dazed state from being shocked. And you know that you're falling. It's hard to tell how far and why and or what happened, but there's definitely the movement uh, the breeze, I guess, that you feel against your face, you can tell it's because there's nothing below your feet. And as you glance upwards, you see the faintest light flicker out. Um, everybody make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, again. Oh, God. Oh, I don't have any sort oh. of... Oh, I don't have any sort of thing for this. Oh no! <laughs> that was not one. Oh no! That was not one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank God I have several backup characters. Seventeen. <laughs> I rolled an oh, eight. No. <laughs> Matt, you didn't even make it through a full arc. <laughs> I mean, you're not dead yet. Let's not mislead the people listening to this in an audio. But you're not dead yet. But you're what not the dead good yet. listeners do not know is that Jezebel started started this game five minutes ago with thirteen hit points, and currently has six. 
so Time you know. to die. We're doing Listen. We're doing real bad tonight in, in this family. It's fine. I believe in you guys. Oh, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> we can do it, guys. Come on. I'm gonna put this dice away, though. Bardic inspiration. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna need some of that. Okay, so. Oh, God. Peter, you. You go from not quite knowing where you are or whether or not you're awake to immediately feeling the impact, like, hit you as you crash into the ground. No anticipation whatsoever. Um, give me a second. Holy shit. I have to... I have to search how much fall damage you get from this. Oh my god. Just, 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 <laughs> it just is, uh, now. if I remember Go. correctly, it's 1d6 per 10 feet. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Good to know. How many feet? <laughs> I ripped Jess. Just right. tell me now, how many feet? Let's go. Oh no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Peter, you. Okay, Peter, you take twenty-one points of fall damage. Oh, what? If oh, I God. God. As your body collides with the ground, and you hear the sickening sound of your own bones splintering your body. This is. This is worse than the pain you felt moments before when you, electricity coursed through your body. This is the feeling of every molecule in your body screaming out in pain as you come to a direct impact with this floor. Em, you half shot me. It's been like five minutes. <laughs> half shot. You half shot me. I'm sorry. It's been like, no, let's keep going. No, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're, so going. We're in this. Um. Peter's screaming, by the way. Like, the second he, like, just feels all that splintering pain, he just is just yelling. He got, he got the wind knocked out of him, and as, he, as soon as he inhales, he's just, ah! Jez, you, um... <laughs> you, a few moments before um, Impact, seem to kind of realize what's happening that you're about to collide with something it's almost as if like you sensed uh that something was approaching you suddenly mm -hmm. and so you try and twist your body to minimize the impact on as much of your body as you can you try to let almost like your backside take the brunt of it um but it is a hard impact and you did not have time to try to do anything to slow yourself down. Uh, and so you're going to take... I'm going to give you... These rolls. Oh, no. Yeah. No. I no, just no, realized no. something. Okay. Actually, yeah. hold on. Let me... <laughs> let me do uh. this. Um, math. Okay. So how okay, you... so you're going to take eight points of fall damage. Jess is unconscious. Which means you are unconscious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, Jez, you turn to brace yourself as you just barely see the ground uh, awaiting you below, and as soon as you make that impact, you black out. Marin, you, however, know exactly what is happening. You know that you are falling, and you can tell that about 10 feet below you, um, you can see the faintest sign of, uh, something, like, ground beneath you. Um, you take this moment to kind of prepare yourself, and you notice that there is a piece, uh, a couple pieces of debris that are following, uh, falling around you, um, most likely from the stadium that was above you and you managed to grab hold of what looks to be a broken chair almost but it is cushioned and you put this beneath you and the floor just fast enough so that what did you roll 17 so that as you impact you kind of catch it 
in a way that your impact is softened enough that you can roll without doing any kind of serious damage to your body. God, the one person in this entire party that doesn't have healing magic <laughs> is me. Yep, congratulations. Well, good thing you're not hurting yet. Uh, where's Snix? I'm gonna immediately get up. Where's Nyx? Oh, that's a that's true. That's okay. <laughs> I should make a dexterity saving throw, so we we'll can we can find out. Oh, actually, I'm gonna make two dexterity saving throws because I forgot to make one to see if he got electrocuted. Mm-hmm. All right, that was a 14 plus. Oh, why didn't his character sheet open when I clicked on it? Hold on, one second. Let my computer think for a moment. Nyx. There it is. Okay. Open, please. I apologize for the clicking sounds. My mouse is at college. I'm using the trackpad. Okay, there we go. Okay, thank god. Um, Nyx... Okay, so Nyx saved for the lightning. Let's see if he saves for this. Uh... Okay, so Nyx, he also um, is kind of aware that he's falling, but he is not as gracious or graceful, I guess, as Marin as he tumbles through the darkness. Uh, he tries to slow his fall, kind of, by almost almost trying to defy gravity. You know, like in those movies when people try to climb up debris? to yeah. escape falling. He mm. tries to kind of pull that stunt and it it doesn't really mm, it doesn't really do a lot, but it's enough that he I think he I think he had something. Oh yeah, okay. So He kind of sees the danger, and for a moment, his body is almost, like, overcome by this black, kind of strange entity. It Like, he almost morphs in midair, and he hits the ground and takes uh, only four points of fall damage. Only four. <laughs> Compared to... Peter, <laughs> it's only four. Uh, especially because Nyx is at full health, so he had forty-five and now only has and now has forty-one. So he's doing okay. Um, but he kind of hits the ground and feels like a throbbing pain from where um the impact initially hit him. But he kind of like sits up and um ah oh my goodness hold on sorry <laughs> um. Sorry, I dropped my phone and it ripped my headphones out of my ears. Um, he kind of, like, jolts up and is really disoriented because he doesn't quite know what really just, like, cushions his impact, what saved him from the absolute brunt of that fall. Um, okay, give me one second. Music commands. Play that shit. Rhythm. I think. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Rhythm. It's it's a low thing, so it'll hopefully pick up. Um, let me adjust accordingly. Um, you said, okay, so you said Marin is looking for Nyx? Yeah. Um, Marin, as you sit up from where you've kind of, uh, rolled through the ground, you see a horrifying, haunting sight before you, as stretched out in front of you seems to be an endless maze of mirrors. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Peter, you <laughs> kind of painfully bring yourself up from the horrific, like, bag of broken bones that your body has become from this impact. And as you kind of turn your head achingly, painstakingly, you see that you are looking back at a reflection of yourself as another uh, row of mirrors endlessly stretches out ahead of you. Jez, you aren't aware. You don't know this is happening. You are unconscious. Uh, Nyx sees the same thing as he kind of comes to uh, his senses, uh, readjusting himself. Um, only when he sits up and looks at the mirror, for a moment he sees something that isn't quite himself, and he's staring into the eyes of something seen in years. And then he's back to normal. Everyone who is conscious, you hear a voice almost tap directly into your heads as a haunting cackle sends a shiver shooting down your spine, the voice of the hag reaching into the depths of your brain to utter her words to you. <sighs> if you refuse to leave, you can just stay with us forever. Or at least as long as you last. Uh, and you begin to hear the faint sound of what almost sounds like ticking. <laughs> ticking? Like a clock ticking? Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Marin's running. <laughs> well, okay, are we- maze? Marin's running. Marin's running through it. <laughs> Wait, you're, you're, you're just booking it? <laughs> You yeah. are not- you are not near we're each not other. We're not near each other. Oh, we're not near each other. Yeah. Oh, no. Let me- let me specify, you guys woke up in what was basically like a small chamber, but you are the only person in that chamber by yourself. Um... Here's- if you would like, I can offer slight suggestions. Um, in this t time- Marin has clearly already made his decision, he's booking it. Um... Other options are you can make perception checks, you can make investigation checks, you can make arcana checks, you can- there are like lots of yeah. skills that you might want to utilize, or you can do what Marin is doing and kind of acting on impulse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to- uh, I wanted to ask if I could, uh, I guess make an arcana check to see if, um, are, are said mirrors, I guess, magical? Or okay. are they like literal physical? Okay, so, go for see. it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, oh man. Oh jeez, guys. Uh, okay, 18 plus 2. Uh, unnatural 20. A 20, alright. Um, so... Peter, as you kind of begin to, like, feel along these walls, it's... It's weird. When you touch them, they- they don't kind of behave like normal mirrors. It's almost as if a small ripple comes out from beneath your hand. It's not, it's not a solid contact of glass. But as you kind of reach your hand through that initial ripple, you do feel something solid behind it. Like, I, okay, I feel something solid behind it. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, but you are watching your reflection do this, and your hand goes through the reflection, but then stops and hits something solid. Okay. Um... So with with a with an unnatural twenty, you and from what you've learned of the nature of the circus, you can come to kind of deduce that this is another Third illusion trick. style yeah. uh, trick. Um, but it doesn't seem as if like it doesn't seem as if it's entirely a lie. Like there does seem to be some kind of construct behind these mirrors. So perhaps only the mirrors are really. Um, what's being, like, cast as an illusion here. Right. Well. 
after after coming to this uh this realization he just gonna step back and he's gonna cast spell magic as best as he can on these mirrors okay um do i have to make do i have to do something uh spell magic i was like choose Oh, wait, uh, choose one uh, magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. For each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. On a successful check, the spell ends. Okay, so um, I guess, do you know what level spell this is? This is... If if the, if this um only works on third level spells or lower, then this is definitely stronger than a third level spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it if it is higher than a third level, then I have to make a um, I have to make an I have to make a check, um, and the DC is equal to ten plus whatever the uh the skill the spell level is. Okay, um, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, let's see. Okay, so make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. That's yeah. Okay, charisma. Okay, good. <laughs> Got plenty of charisma. Um, how does this have a range also? Uh, yeah, the range is 120 feet. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, 13 plus five, 18. Okay. Um, you cast this against the mirror. And you watch uh, as the rippling effect kind of uh, grows larger and larger, and from behind, uh, you see your hand reappear again uh, from behind the glass as it is pressed against a... <sighs> not quite, like, ancient wall, but it's definitely one that has not, like... It's an underground wall, so it is basically, like, very, I don't know, dirty. There's lichen growing uh, over it. Um, you see this kind of wall appear from behind the mirror, and as you turn to your right, where the hallway continued past you, um, you start to see that this mirror is uh, disappearing down the hallway, but all it reveals is that there is a firm, like, thick solid stone wall behind it. Alright. And uh, then you watch as it continues down. Um, it kind of, by doing this, you've kind of eliminated some source of light somehow. Um, and you see it kind of come to an end and there's a white uh, space way off in the distance, about 120 feet away from you. Uh, real quick, I'm going to cut to Marin. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Marin, what are you doing? Are you just making a straight sprint down the hallway that you're at? Um, is there only one hallway? Yeah, right now all you can see is that it's a straight, it's a straight away. Yeah, but as I'm going, I'm gonna try to, can I try to look in the mirrors? Yeah, sure. And see if um, there's anything other than just my reflection, like my normal reflection. <laughs> Yeah. Um, as you're sprinting, I can tell you that when you look over to see yourself, you see yourself as you are, covered from fingertip to about your elbow in black scars, and you can see the hint of another black scar peeking out maybe over your collar from the one on your chest. But it is you. Okay, I'm just gonna keep running. Okay. Maybe slow down a little from like full sprint. <laughs> but okay. uh I'm just gonna you keep running. You hear both of you hear actually Ah uh, Peter, I'm gonna have you make a perception check. Uh just because you would technically be further away. Okay. Um Marin actually I'll wait until uh Peter makes the check first. Uh, let's say... Oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> a, uh, oh, great. Okay, six plus four, ten. Okay. Um, Peter, you seem to hear, like, maybe the faintest indication, like, the faintest sound of something far off in the distance beyond where, uh, your, the range of your spell has. 
it is so, so faint that it almost, like, you almost feel as if you've imagined it. Mm. Uh, but Marin, you don't quite hear what it says, but you recognize the voice belonging to Nyx as he calls something out. Um, oh. Okay. Um, was Peter able to discern the direction of that sound? Uh, Peter knows that it definitely came from beyond the end of the hallway that he is looking down. Because, like, Peter's in the same situation as Marin, where he was dropped in a chamber, but there's right. only one long hallway currently as an exit. Yeah, well, with the few remaining intact bones he has left in his body, he's going to go down that hallway as well. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. This shambling, like, mass of broken bones and flesh. Um... Hold on, I have to set a timer real quick. Ah. Okay. Uh. Um, Marin, you're still running, and I would like, I mean, I'd like you to know that Nyx is also currently doing ex basically exactly what you are. He reacted on instinct and starts sprinting down the hallway. Um. If all of you are now uh, proceeding down the hallway, you are running towards what seems to be almost like a blinding light, but it's the only possible exit out of this um, hallway that you can tell. And the three of you begin your sprint, maybe less for Peter, falling a little behind <gasps> the, full piece of, uh, the full pace of his uninjured cohorts. Um, but after a few moments of running that seem to stretch into an eternity, you start to hear around you the sounds of the pounding footprint, uh, footsteps of your party members sprinting towards you. Marin, to your left, you hear uh, heavier footsteps, and to your right, you can kind of hear the faint sound of maybe someone else approaching on your right as well. Um, but they're not quite as a, uh, strong and defined. Peter, you definitely hear uh, a shuffling like noise happening a, a few feet ahead of you uh, coming from your left and Nyx can hear uh, the footsteps of at least one other person coming up from his right as the three of you make your ways out of, make your ways out of this, these hallways into a room filled with brilliant light, completely and uh, entirely uh, constructed uh, from mirrors. And sitting in the center of this room is a wheel with various symbols on it, and in the center, a clock is counting down seconds. Uh, Did we all just run into the same room? Yep, all three of you emerged in the same room. Okay. Baron, she's... We're, uh, uh, he looks... Peter looks around and he's just, like, counting his... Where, where's Jazz? Peter, you also notice as you came out of uh, your tunnel, there is there seems to be a little bit of like mirror missing beyond the ex like the exit of your tunnel. Mm -hmm. you, your spell seems to have extended long enough to actually affect some of the uh, mirror in this room, but there's it doesn't reveal anything. It's still it's completely made of stone. Um, but good question. Good fucking question. <laughs> Uh, was, well, were they with any of you? No. No, I fucking woke up with two whole intact bones. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Peter, you look, you look real bad. Been through worse. But what the fuck? What the fuck is this? He points at the clock, and uh, can I? I guess perception on the symbols. Or whatever, uh, yeah, you, whatever you appropriate can... skill would that be? Um, I mean, I, I you don't really need to make a roll for this because you're just looking to examine the symbols, right? Right. Okay. Um. So there are about. Let me think. I'd say five different 
symbols, five or six. I'm gonna go with six, actually. Six different symbols on this um, wheel, although the symbols are uh, represented multiple times on the wheel. Uh, you see a sword, uh, you see uh, two cross swords, you see a spiral, you see a mushroom, you see a thundercloud, I don't know how many is that for? Um, you see, um, oh my god, brain work, I made this list earlier and I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Oh, you see a flame, and you see, um, a question mark. And where are the hands of the clock currently? The, uh, clock seems to indicate, uh, there are only about, hold on, my stupid phone decided to do something. Oh, there you go. Um, that's my alarm going off. One second. Does that mean um, we're dead? Peter. Oh no. Um, as you go to check, hello, my alarm. I would love it if you would stop ringing now that I have hit stop on you. <laughs> um, Peter, as you turn your attention from the symbols to uh the second hand. Uh, as there isn't really, well, there is a minute hand, I guess, but it's currently pointed at the top, at a five. Uh -huh. And you watch as that second hand makes its last few stops, uh, ticks before hitting that minute hand, and a deafening chime reverberates through the chamber that you're in. It almost seems to make the mirrors around you reverberate a little as well. The Peter, the illusion that you noticed when you tried to touch the mirror uh, becomes pretty visible as the noise causes the illusion to kind of waver a bit. Okay. Um, but the wheel begins to spin itself and... I'm glad I made it six, because I have a six-sided die. Ooh, buddy. I oh, got no, I no. got question mark. Uh, so you guys watch as this uh, wheel spins and spins and spins right in front of your eyes. It's a black and white wheel, so as it spins, it kind of blurs almost in like a um, spiral-esque. Uh, pattern and let me quickly pull up my random encounter ooh fun let's up the level on this a little bit though Oh, goodness. Hold on, let me make sure this is something. Sorry for this little blip. I didn't expect to get question mark right off the bat, so I didn't have the appropriate thing pulled up. Okay. You hear, um, oh boy, a voice kind of reach out uh, and touch your mind. This time it's not quite as uh, disturbing as when you felt the hag's voice uh, reach out to you. Uh, but you hear what seems to sound like, Oh, the time has come. And you watch as this giant ooze begins to pool up 
in the middle of the room. And suddenly it changes into the form of... Ooh, what does it look like? It's a shape changer. <laughs> I want to know how large this thing can get. Sorry, it's not being very specific. Hmm. Okay, I see, I see. Um, it morphs into uh, what looks to be Wyvern. Like a Wyvern made out of slime? Mm, no, like a Wyvern. Oh, like an actual Wyvern, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh. Um, and it lets out a shrieking roar and roll initiative everyone yeah everyone roll initiative you're all except for um jez i was gonna say me oh on the floor nick's somewhere did in okay nowhere. nick's got a 21 on initiative remember to put your initiative rolls in dice rolls marin did bad marin did bad uh what's my initiative modifier again six okay that's five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So that is a 15. Okay. Uh. Oh, it's so difficult to translate things from 3.5 to 5e. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Um, let me... Oh, okay, so the thing tied with Marin. Let's see what its initiative bonus is, though. Initiative is dex. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it beat Marin. I don't have my whiteboard. This is gonna be annoying. Uh, okay. Nyx is actually first up because he got a 21. Uh, so... Nyx is actually going to... look at uh, you guys in kind of like a panic notion and use a free action to be like... If Jez is down here, I think it should be a priority to find them first. And find some way to deal with this separately so I can stay here and try no, to distract you go here, this you go. but I'm like but Peter's like just... a billion broken bones I still got a few tricks up my sleeve I always have a backup Ugh. I have like a Peter Did you say something else, uh, Wiz? No, I just look at Peter. Oh. oh okay. Like... Think. I'm thinking one of you has to run. You can go find Jez, so which one wants to do it? Oh, uh, shit. Peter, I can't do you want to stay here, or do you want to go find Jez? I'm gonna... despite... despite my current... my current position, I... I will stay here because, like I said, I still have a trick up my sleeve. I and if it works, then me and me and Mary can both catch up with you 
if it works. Okay. I'm going to assume that if Jez is here, they're down the other passageway that's supposed to be at the end of that's at the end of this room. And Nyx kind of points uh, towards uh, where there is a fourth entrance into the room uh, that you've entered. Um, but it was not one of the three hallways that you guys emerged from. I just point at it and look at him. And then I'm yeah, I know. On. I'm going. And he takes off and starts running towards um, the hall. Uh, he was not, was he? Hold on, let me see what the attack range is on. Oh, isn't it like a 20 foot range around someone if you're like, um, disengaging from a uh, fight? Um, I think you just, if you're disengaging, you just would have had to have been in there. Yeah, um, I think you did. Okay, so he should be fine, right? There's no attack opportunity radius, attack right? happening here. No. No, okay. unless he's, like, adjacent. Yeah, he's not, like, yeah. right in front of this thing. This thing is kind of crawling out from the, uh, wall that's in front of you. Right. Yeah, then he um, should be okay. Yeah, so he's okay. gonna run in the opposite direction, and he'll be fine. Okay, so he takes off down the hallway, which means it is Peter's turn. <sighs> Alright. I like to imagine Peter is just, like, kind of... Props up his viol on like his shoulder that he can't pick, like the arm that he can't pick up, and he starts plucking at the strings and he casts Hypnotic Pattern on the Worven. Okay, uh, do I have to make a saving throw? Yes, uh, must make a wisdom save. Okay. Uh, let's see. What are my modifiers? Mm. I don't think. Yep, those are mm -mm. bad. Actually, what is this modifier? Oh, I should really have like a chart printed out. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it's a plus two. Mm, that was a d10. Hold on, let me try again. I <laughs> rolled the wrong fucking dice. It was a d12, not a d10. Uh, that's stupid. Um, does a 13 save? Nope. Awesome. Okay. okay. On a failure, the creature becomes charmed, and while charmed by the spell, the creature is incapacitated and has a speed of zero. Okay. Uh, you watch, Peter, as uh, the creature in front of you, I believe I believe wyverns are not resistant to charming. <laughs> I will uh, double check. Be. I don't think they are. Uh, we're gonna go with they aren't. Because yes. I don't care to be like yes. that in depth right now. Yeah, okay, they're, you're, you're good. Um, you watch as it kind of like, its eyes almost glaze over instantly and it seizes up uh it's seeming to be almost tamed uh, from your music. All right, Peter looks over. After that, Peter looks at Marin. Is like, should we, should we go catch? We should go catch up with Nix. Check on Jazz. While we still have time. Can you hold that while you're gone? For about a minute. Okay, and then I just book it. Yeah, I, can, I book it as well. Um, I will say, uh, yeah, the duration is up to a minute, and the range is also 120 feet. Okay. Then you yeah. are, you are good to go. Yeah. Alright, um, the three of you, um, Nick's significantly ahead of you, but not so much so that you can't really see him ahead of you, as this is also a straight-away hallway. Um, begin your, uh, sprint down in search of Jez, Nyx is calling their name, uh, not really um, caring whether or not that there's any kind of like reason to be silent. Um, and he, you, Marin, and Peter see as he reaches the end of the hall and kind of comes to a dead stop and takes a step back. Uh, for a moment, and 
as you catch up to him and are staring into this room, you are staring at what seems to be a divot. And um, it almost looks as if there is like in the illusion the illusion almost seems to have broken in this part and glitched out so half half of the room is covered in mirror but in front of you at your feet you see the bloodied and unconscious unmoving form of jezebel divided into the ground and unresponsive and that's where we're gonna end um, <laughs> I'm sorry that this was super short, but I hope that it kind of set up um, the things that are to come in the next session. Um, I have homework to do before midnight, which is why I had to cut this at an hour, and I realized that most of us should be kind of uh, logging out by midnight. So I hope that this was an okay session, even though it was so brief. No, it was great. Really good. Yeah, um, I got half shot in. I fucking. <laughs> Put a wear into sleeve. It's great. I'm excited for what's to come. I'm Nat. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. As I said, Some happy to have you on characters. <laughs> happy to have you on the show. Happy to have you as a part of this party. <laughs> as you can oh, see, I'm fun. very effective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that is it. Um, I hope. Uh, there are probably no listeners presently uh, just because I didn't make an announcement and this is an unusual time for us to be streaming uh, but I hope to future listeners that this was enjoyable to listen to and that you all have a good night